Right, where's the small one? Small one gone? Good. Well, that only took me one white honey. Could have gone worse. Could have gone better. But I shall take this. However, this does mean the boys were certainly not lying in regards to the Kikimoas. That's for sure. However, the mysterious missing of Hugo remains to be seen as of right now. And while I'm at it, definitely want to get rid of you. Just in case. Certainly can't hurt. By the sound of things to the west, there seems to be something which either could be more Kiki Moors or it could be Hugo. But whatever the case may be, these caverns, they seem rather massive. So, I for sure can't go that way. We're going to have to find our way through this. Well, maybe following all the little tidbits that we can find. Uh, there is way too many Kikimore eggs here. And I don't feel like them hatching and me having to deal with their offspring. And at the same time... Oh, I can't pick you up. Well, that's fine. I will take... What was it? Right over here. You remain to be valuable to me. You can sell it. You can use it. Way too many eggs! Yikes! At least they burn nicely. That's a positive. But it looks like our Hugo might have ran. Oh, he definitely got hurt. Fresh blood on the blade. Weapon was Hugo's, maybe. Yeah. I will take that along with me. Blood trail. Could be Hugo's wounded. Drop the sword. Oh, I do hope he's not poisoned right now. He's gonna be dead if he's poisoned. Blood hasn't even dried. Yeah, that's definitely very recent. Uh, water? Warm and damp. Kiki Moors prefer cooler environments. Probably why they keep their distance. That means he might be very much in luck right now. These have a rough go here. Uh. Damn, what? water's hot. Get burned if I don't watch it. Could use some protection. Maybe Quen will work. Quen will work, but right now... There is something in there that draws my attention. Um, I first want to find Hugo right here, right now. Hugo? Is that you? Or is it more Kiki Moors? I'm hearing something there that could be outside. It's not you, at least. You, Hugo. Your brother sent me. Ja! Dizzards! Scoundrels! Tartmongers! They attacked me, but I fended them off. Now, they sent a brigand to finish the job. Hold on, what? Okay, uh, what the bloody hell are you talking about? I'm no brigand, but what's going on here? What are you talking about? Ran into them outside, claimed monsters attacked. They ran, made it out, but you got stuck inside. They asked me to help you. Is that what they told you? The lying weasels. More trickery on their part, I'm certain. Whoa, slow down. What's this about? Uh, I'm Hugo Monar. My father, Victor Monar, you may have heard of. A cognac distiller he was, famed for it. Not exactly. Before he passed, my brothers and I would quarrel over who would inherit the family business. So father decided he would force us to work together. He broke his still down into its parts. Three of them he hid, telling each of us the location of one. When my brothers learned my part, the last, was hidden in here, they decided they did not need me anymore. They decided to cut me out of the business. Literally. Yeah, we yeah. argued, fought. The noise must have woken the beasts. My brothers ran for the mouth, while I ran deeper in. And you did not find the missing part yet, I imagine. And care less about your missing... No. I'm assuming you haven't found it yet. I might have an idea of where it is. What about the missing part? Find it? No. I know only that it's in this cave. Likely at the bottom of a pool. I feel awkward to ask, but... As I am wounded, would you be kind and retrieve it? At this point in time, that's a very small effort. Yeah, I'll help you. No problem. 
Fine, I can do that. But you must know, I... I cannot pay you well. Figured as much. Start producing cognac, I'll come by for a discount. That, I promise you. Wait here. Okay, make sure you deliver to Corvo Bianco Vineyards. We might be competition in the end, but... Uh, who knows? Either way, I'm... St okay, whatever I'm hearing clearly is not here. Well, that's good news for me. However, your situation is an interesting one. Clearly, there's some brotherly feud going on in regards to who gets to do the distillery business. Can, can I please just walk and grab that? How hard can that be? Come on. It's not that difficult. It's not the part we're looking for, but it's unrefined copper. And I'd like to have it. Thank you. All right. So it's most definitely in the pool over here. Quinn will probably help me out a little bit. Let's see if there's another way to get through here. Because at least there's some puffball. Oh, there's more kicky moors. Okay, I for sure will get rid of those as well. Might want to do that first. Gold nuggets, hello. These caves really contain some valuable resources. But what I'm going to do is make sure that these kicky moors will not actually cause issues. Because they will. Oh, they for sure will. I just murdered all of you. Well, in that case, insectoid oil back on. And I'm going to take a real quick look to see what else they were weak against. Yeah, just insectoid oil, white honey, and igni. Igni always is a good tool. Which means... Friends... You will burn quite a bit. This is fine. This is fine. I want to make sure that once we get out of here, Hugo will actually stay alive. So, one by one, all of you burn. This will be fine. This will be fine. Keep the kicking more busy. Am I using the right sword? I am using the right sword, right? Yes, I am using the right sword. Wait, hold on. Place a this is not where we just were? Okay, this is not where we just were. However, what I am noticing right now is that I might need to have use a little bit more Eden as well while I'm at it. Because, dear, oh dear, you guys are definitely a massive big bother. Come on. This is fine. This is fine. Just burn. Just burn. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is good. Can one of you hit me? Thank you. Very much appreciate it. And... No. Really? You nasty little bugger. <sighs> Kiki Wars are highly problematic. But I thought this was the area where we just were. Clearly not. I will take your bits. Thank you. Oh, take those. Uh, who are you? Letter to Martina Kriska. Okay, you had a lot of stuff. Uh, the so-called giant centipede and the adventure of Spiky and the White called Franconi. Well, let's start with the important bits. Dear my... You know what? Let's get you first. Make sure that we don't die. I will draw from you for sure. There we go. And then we will get away from the noise right after we steal some treasure. It's silence. Okay, that's fine. Let me read that letter. Letter to Martina Kriska. Congratulations on being promoted to the Imperial Academy at Castle Gropian. I'm sure you'll quickly become one of the institution's premier scholars. Yet before you set up for Nilfgaard, I, old Victor Monard, would like to ask you for a small favor. You know my sons, you play together as children, so you know how hard it is to coax them to get along. I feel my bones will soon come time for me to leave this veil of tears. Yet I shall go with a heavy heart, knowing August, Hugo and Lucian will go at each other's throats as soon as I pass. Thus I have dismounted my famed still into three parts and ask you, my darling Martina, to hide them from my sons. Perhaps searching together for the missing pieces of a machine which will give them wealth will bind them together and forever put an end to these foolish quarrels. In exchange for your troubles, 
I have included a modest pouch of coin. I wish you good luck. Your devoted servant, Victor Monard. Well, that plan went belly up quite quickly the moment she tried to hide stuff in here. Dear, dear. And meanwhile, this book, The Adventures of a Spiky in a White called Franconi. Once upon a time, in a small mount near the Vermentino vineyard, there lived a white named Franconi. Amiable by nature, he spent his days in the mound cooking various kinds of soups. Not that he was particularly fond of soups, it was his beloved pet, a bar guest named Spikey, that slurped them up greedily. And so they sat there side by side, Franconi the white and Spikey the bar guest, cooking soups made of decaying bones, withered weeds and, if they managed to swipe some metal, nails, their favorite delicacy. Eating nails? Yikes. I mean, they do give a bite, I guess, but... Eh. One day, Franconi heard two grave diggers talk about a certain man of wealth who kept various kinds of cheese in his cellar. A cheese soup sounded like a delectable treat to Franconi, so he snuck into the noble cellar and stole the biggest cheese wheel there was. When he got home, Franconi started slowly melting the cheese in his favorite pot. The stench was so awful, Spikey ran off and refused to go back to the mound. To add to the already terrible state of things, the smell of cheese permeated everything, so Spikey and Franconi had to pack their things and move. The moral of the story is simple. If you are cooking a cheese soup, make sure the cheese you choose is not blue. Oh dear. <laughs> well, that's a fun story, but unrelated to the business at hand. Either way, we're still slowly dying. Everything is fine. We'll survive. We need to find a way to get our little well, distillery piece back. I'm sure what kind of piece exactly it will be. I have no experience with that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, I will try my best to help our friend out. If I at least can remember where the bloody hell we just came from. Ah, here it is. Alright. Well, there's enough bits and pieces of interest in there, so... I am curious, can I use my Quen to possibly heal myself up while standing in here? Nope. Not working. Definitely not working. Well, in that case, down we go. And let's see where this will bring me. Down we go. That's it, that's it. Alright, we have got our still filter. Hello. And meanwhile, lots of other treasure. I'm sure if it's worth an awful lot, but people dropped it in here. And I sure as hell will get it all out. Dragon skills, those are rare. I mean, this is a very good hiding place if you want to hide treasure. I mean... I do wonder how the bloody hell this lady thought that these boys would be able to manage to get this filter out of this hot water. Well, I need to bloody well use Quen to survive. I mean, very much so, because I'm right now burning up. I'm definitely burning up. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, unsure how those boys will manage to get that out of there, but... Hey, we are good at our job. And I think we might have to do a little bit of family counseling while, when we get out of here, because... If your story is true, and they indeed wanted to kill you... And this did not happen because of the Kiki Morris. Well, yeah. Found the missing part. Really hit that well, your father. Oh, that's fantastic. Your pay. It is not much, I know. But I promise you good prices. The best once the tavern is open again. Hold you to that. Now let's go. Brothers are probably getting antsy. Wait, see there? My brothers. They've rounded up some thugs. They mean to attack me. We don't know that. Would you try to tell me it's a coincidence that they return with an armed band? Well, there was come for the last part of the still. They won't kill me for it. Please, you may only hope. Kill them. Elsewise, they'll kill me. Well, there were your brothers. You want that? Well, perhaps not them, 
but the other roughs, for certain. As to my brothers, I don't know. You couldn't perhaps render them harmless? Uh, will you defend me? Okay, I'm not entirely sure if these people are actually thugs hired by your brothers in order to kill you, because otherwise they would have hired me to kill you. They wanted to save you, I think. Also, they want to get rid of the Kikimors for sure, but... No, no one dies today. Because I think... If I have to make a guess, if they are indeed hired thugs to kill you, well, then sure, they will attack us, we will know instantly. I'm not gonna go out there and fight them and kill them. No one dies, not today. What happens between you and your brothers, this needs to be talked out, clearly. And even though that's gonna be difficult, no one dies. Not about to start cutting folk down because of a family squabble about some spare bit of machinery. We're going over there, and you're gonna settle this, talk it out. But should they attack, you will protect me, will you not? They won't if be foolish attack, enough. Unprovoked. Let's go. Because I want to get to the bottom of this story now. Hugo! Are you well? We were worried! Why do I doubt this? Listen, while you were in there, we realized this tiff is senseless, idiotic. You might have been harmed gravely, and that's something we could never live down. Yushin is right. We must bury this hatchet, work together as father wished it. Why did you bring the muscle? Did you think I would not succeed at the job, or did you have other plans? Hmm. Claim to come in peace. But then who are these men? Hunters, who had made camp nearby. I had spotted them. They spotted us and asked if we had no need for their aid. You went in, were gone a long time? With these men to help, we thought we might come to your rescue. Huh. Well. In that case, I guess a happy ending for everyone. And thus, with the job complete, we did have a contract here, didn't we? Alright, glad to see you've made up. Now I really need to get back to my own affairs. Naturally. Uh, your payment. We thank you for your help. Should you ever find yourself near the clever clocks, you must stop in. Superb cognac. Some of the best. Your brother told me about it. So long. And next time you have a squabble, solve it with words, not with fists. And meanwhile, my squabble for sure remains to be that my toxicity remains very high, very slowly going down. But, yeah. Did father know worst? Maybe. Maybe not. But hopefully at the end of the day, everything will turn out just right. Before speaking to the posters of the notice, Geralt set out to do a bit of reconnaissance, yet he returned to them quickly to find out what the job was to entail. The brothers, trembling in fear, explained that their other brother, beset by monsters, was trapped in a nearby cave. Geralt followed a trail of blood to find Hugo. Wounded by monsters, the man had sought shelter in the cave's depths. As Geralt and Hugo were leaving the none too hospitable caverns, Hugo's two siblings, assisted by a handful of armed men, blocked their way. Fearing for his life, Hugo begged the witcher to teach his treacherous bastard brothers a lesson. Yet as we all know, Geralt has a strong aversion for unnecessary violence, so he turned Hugo down. This proved a wise decision. Forced to discuss the differences, the three brothers settled their dispute and resolved to embark on an enterprise together. And then they will figure out that still pieces no longer fit together because they were broken apart and then everything falls to ruins. I really hope that that won't be the case. And so, with that little expedition now done, thus having obtained a place of power at the same time, which was a nice bonus, there are some interesting tidbits here and there waiting for us. First and foremost, the ruins of Bastoy Prison were apparently right in front of us, which holds some pieces to the Grandmaster Manticore gear. And sure, there are multiple places where more gear is waiting for us, so I'm not entirely sure where that story will bring us in the end, because we only got a steel or a silver sword right now. But once we have done that, I for sure want to pay a visit to what's going on over here, because apparently another contract from the Camalengo is waiting for us. So, 
Prisons first. The prison ruins right in front of us. I'm going to assume, as with the idea that these are ruins, definitely gonna add some spectral oil just in case, because that usually is the case with ruins. Just the ghosts of the past lingering about the place. We will be ready to face them as our toxicity slowly continues to go down. Behind here. Well, if you have anything behind, then only we will be able to find it, because we are the best at what we do. Which includes picking up puffballs. And by the sound of things, there for sure is a hidden treasure. Okay, hidden treasure for sure. Who left all this junk behind? I mean, it's useful junk, but nonetheless. Black armor die formula, I'll take it. New out to sell night gauntlets. Something hidden by its stones. Librarian's Memoirs. I embezzled and I stole. I admit this and I'm ashamed of my actions. But what was I to do? My salary as a scribe was so laughably meager I was reduced to borrowing coin from my mother. I was a thief, but I also did a great deal of good for the palace library. Who secured the imports of such tomes as the lives of the prophets? The hab... The hemorrhoidibus? The Art of Midwifery for Maidens and many others. Bloody hell, what are book names? The Palace Library has me to thank for the storehouse of all knowledge needed for a merry and satisfied life. And all the rare tomes, such as Speculum Aureum and the Larvae Centur... Honestly, I'm not even going to read all of that. <laughs> Theft and embezzlement mean nothing. A man's true value shows in the manner in which he treats books. Yep. Kinda. Maybe. Not entirely. Either way... Merton, did you leave this behind? Well, ain't that peachy. Ain't that peachy. Now, what am I hearing? There's something up there for sure. Uh, what's the deal with... Oh, that treasure. Hello. What happened to you? Clerk diary and the old key. Well, we find the key, but... Fragment of a journal soiled with blood and spinal fluid. Yikes. It portended to be just another day as a clerk at the Ducal Treasury. Start the morning with baguettes and come on there. Then shovel some parchments and head for home before dusk. Today, however, the normal order of things was disturbed. Dramatically. I came across a highly interesting note in the archives. And along with it, a key. The key is the more interesting find, because according to what I could decipher from the dust-covered scribblings on the note, it opens a chest full of gold coins. That I'm getting ahead of myself. While doing some routine straightening of the files, I found a report outlining the procedures for the reform of Bastoy Prison, ordered straight from Duke Henry Grass. We are all we aware how badly this experiment ended. For the ruins of that prison to this day frighten any potential tourists with their battered skeletons and legends about howling spirits of the murdered guards. Yet I do not know that hiding among the abandoned ruins there was a chest, and that its key was lying right under my nose. The chest supposedly contains crowns meant for the purchase of books and rations for the inmates of Bastoy. One of the clerks employed here at the time committed a sin of omission and sent the chest to the warden without the key. Yet perhaps that was for the best. The warden was impaled and the guards all skinned alive meaning those degenerates would have also got their hands on the chest had he received the key. As it is, might the chest be still there, unopened? Folks say a curse has fallen on that place, a dark power brought down by the bestiality of the murderers it beheld. But folk also say an Ophiri will become Emperor of Nilfgaard and herald the end of the world, so there's not much point giving any of such jabbering much credence. If you say so. But I guess the Toussaint prison experiment did not exactly go according to plan. Wandering about the slopes of Mount Gorgon, Geralt came upon some grim foreboding ruins. He set about exploring them and nearly tripped over a corpse. As always, he searched the body for a journal or letter that could shed some light on the circumstances of the individual's death. And this time too, this routine paid off. It always does down the line, always search the bodies. He found a journal and a key. 
The journal details an unsuccessful experiment that had resulted in Bastoy Prison being destroyed. The Witcher also learned of a chest full of gold that remained hidden within the ruins. Which for sure seems to be related to our Witcher friends and also... Oh dear, many more people who died here. I'm foolish enough, but... What did they die to? Because I'm... Spoke too soon. Okay, what the bloody hell is an Alp? Oh, you're definitely vampire. If you do that, you're just like a Bruxa. All right. Ooh. Hello, my friend. You are fast. All right, all right. I don't know what you're weak against. Oh. Um. Do you like fire? Okay. You block me. I have got a feeling. Okay, assume that you are a vampire. Black blood. I can't attack you. How do I deal with you? How do I deal with you? How do I deal with you? Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Wait. My god! Okay, there we go, there we go. Yeah? You wanna try and hit me from here? That's fine. How about this? Get another trick on my sleeve. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. You will not stand much of a chance. Hidden traps all over the place. You will go down. Okay. This is fine. This is fine. No shouting. No shouting. More Eden. For as long as this will work. Come on. Come on. All the way over here. All the way over here. That will be it. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. You don't stand a chance. And I am really interesting in figuring out what the hell you are and how I kill you properly. You for sure are jumping around way too much. So, how about we shall not do that. Come on. Join me. That's it. You just keep on running. Keep on running. There's no escaping me. There we slowly go. No. <laughs> Not today. Yikes. But you're a dangerous creature for sure. I mean, yup. Vampire. Your Bruxa screams kind of gave that part away. So what the bloody hell do we know about Alps? Looked like a Bruxa? But that was no Bruxa. Fragment of a conversation between the Elderman of Falquorn and a Witcher. Alps are vampires that resemble Bruxa in appearance. They are called phantoms by some, a name which fits them well enough. For like phantoms, they haunt and torment men. They usually take on the form of a woman, though they can also appear as animals. They are most often found prowling near villages. They attack at night and are most active when the moon is full. Alp saliva can make one fall asleep, and when applied to a sleeping man, can invoke horrible nightmares. Some suggest they are the cause of legends about men who go to sleep healthy and are found in the morning white as snow, not a drop of blood in their veins. Definitely Eden, vampire or... Moon dust bombs certainly could help with the whole teleport thing around, because that was also the deal with Bruxay, right? Yeah. Well, next time I find an Alp, moon dust bomb and Eden. But still, a dangerous opponent to fight for sure. Anyway, with that now done, we have our key. We have figured out what the bloody hell actually killed the people here. And meanwhile, we have got a work order. Uh, Toussaint, Dougal Guard's Captain's Armor, the Trousers, that's fine. But not our Witcher gear. Hmm. Well then. So what about this work order? Order from the reorganization and reform of Bastoy Prison. To the Warden. By decree of his illustrious grace, Duke Henry III, Jacques Solex, Warden of Bastoy Prison, is required to implement the following reforms. 1. Dismiss half of the prison guard staff. That's where things go wrong. 2. Forbid the use of corporal force against the inmates. That's where things go even more wrong. 3. Discontinue punishment by dark cells, limited rations and flogging. 
okay, maybe that might work a tiny bit, but pair that with all the other stuff at the same time, and you will have the the fact that the the well the inmates will run the prison, not the guards. Four. Permit the prisoners to possess private property. Definitely don't do that, I think, because that's how you get them to have contact with people outside of the prison. Allow prisoners to walk at will around the penitentiary grounds. And six, purchase, using the included funds, vitals of the finest quality and hire a teacher to instruct in reading and writing and purchase any equipment necessary for said instruction. His illustrious grace Duke Henry III believes these changes, based on models popular in the more civilized lands on the south, will result in a lowering of the rate of crime in all of the duchy by showing young offenders a pathway to a new life. Junior clerk. Well, it's all very nice and dandy. Uh, Philip Yori Simbardo. The idea behind it is good, but more often than not, that kind of stuff just goes horribly wrong. Especially if you do all of that at the same time. You just lose complete and utter control of your prison. Either way, not the witch gear we were after, but I have got a feeling that we might find a little bit of success if I am very careful. Up here, hello. And what am I hearing in the distance? Griffin, maybe? No, that's a fork tail. Oh, that's fine. Meanwhile, I'll take your stuff and diagram for a mount, core steel sword, and the prisoner's journal. 30 Berg, 1201. My fellow captive, Merton, who for so many months kept his neck stiff, mocked my faith in Labioda and praised the joys of a riotous life. Today he broke down completely. He admitted he had wasted his God's given time on pleasures of the flesh, and all that he had to show for it were chains and indignities. I tried to lift his spirits, to tell him that there is another path, that he can cast off his past habits and devote his life to Labioda and his teachings. For now, my counsels have fallen on deaf ears, but I believe he will one day convert and listen to the truth. 17 Lamas 1202 It is shocking how pleasantly I now converse with Merton. It beggars belief to think we once could not bear each other's presence. He is a man transformed, metamorphosed. I feel he has accepted this new path. He devours greedily all I tell him about Labiota and his teachings. What rapture it is that, in this dank and dark dungeon, the prophet sent me a sinner and gave my life meaning. It is over. Merton has served the sentence and left these accursed dungeon walls. The teachings which I have tried to pass on to him during these last dozen months have clearly taken root. Merton has vowed to go on a pilgrimage which will let him cast off his old ways and open the doors for a new life. As I advised, he will go first to a cave where Labioda receives enlightenment and on whose walls he carved four of his great truths. I hope the aura of that place will help Merton, as it has helped many before him, achieve cleansing and gain strength to continue his pilgrimage onto his next station, which I advise him should be... where exactly? Notes in the journal suggest that straight out of prison, Merton went to the legendary cave. Lebiota was supposed to have hunkered down there once. That's my next destination. No, that was our previous destination, because that's exactly where we went. Only places now remaining right now are all the way up here, which would be the temple of Lebiota, and finally, a, a cave where he wants it. Is that cave? I thought the cave over here was the cave that we were talking about. Or here. But, eh. No matter. I have my rewards. I am fine. Which means uh, I need to very slowly find my way down again. Because sure I managed to get up here one way. But I would like to take things slow as I go in this direction. Let's see. That is where one of the Camalengo's contracts was. So... Oh, there are for sure still more waiting here in this prison. Okay, maybe not too much interesting stuff, but hey. Stuff is still stuff. And I won't say no to that. Especially as this Alp killed even more people. Ah, uh, well. One man's... 
death is another man's treasure. Why is there a dead cow here? I'm not even sure if I want to know. By the way, I guess we shall move on. There probably isn't anything else remaining here, right? Yeah, only some herbs here and there, I guess. I'll do one final quick sweep. Nope, that seems to be indeed all just some herbs here and there, which is all fine by me. Either way, onwards to another Camalengo contract. Meanwhile, I'm hearing boars in the wild. Not gonna mess around with those. Annoying buggers that they are. I mean, what do I need boar tusks for? Yes, I could use the hide, maybe, but... Okay, you are coming my way. Um... I kind of wonder what's going on over here. Um, another night trouble? Or just a giant? Cooper Slope, Gorgon Fields. Greetings! Is there an issue here? I'd imagine there is an issue. You, my friend, are definitely gonna cause issues, which means a little bit of upgrade oil certainly can't hurt. Also, my silver sword is breaking down. Uh, let me really quickly fix that before we go into combat, good sir. Uh, let's see. How badly damaged are you? Quite a bit. Which means one of these shall do the trick for now. Alright, my friends. You wanna play? You definitely wanna play! Definitely wanna play! Definitely wanna play! Oh, <laughs> Don't wanna get into trouble with that! But this should prove to be... No issue at all, especially because Quen will keep me safe, and meanwhile, Rent will keep the power up. Oh, you, my good sir. I'm very sorry. I'll finish it quickly. I wanted to end that with a very impressive Rent, but you had to go and ruin my moment, didn't you? Either way, one more issue dealt with, which means the people can finally return. And if only we use this time of meditation to also replenish our potions and whatnot. But that, of course, is never the case. Ah, well, everyone, hope you're happy with what I did. Meanwhile, I shall really quickly clean up the bits that I made over here. Yeah, ask that yes. towards the giant cyclops. I helped you guys. You better not be talking about me, good sir. Because I will take your stuff. I said I will take your stuff. There we go. Don't need a bag of grain. You can keep that. Either way. More people happy. I'm a happy witcher. And I'll get paid in the end. Not by a lot, but hey, every little tidbit for sure will count when we are dealing with, well, many things that require our money. Anyway, with that done, let's move upwards. No. Let's go and see what the deal is with this Isle of Laxelafi. Because there was something about virtues and whatnot. I am definitely curious. Upon a notice board in Tucson, Geralt spotted a mysterious notice inviting all who dare to undergo a test of virtue. All who wished to face a challenge clearly to their character above all were to find their way to an isle upon La Selafi. A witcher found the notice intriguing enough that he resolved to see what the test entailed. But as we scale down these mountains, we also are getting closer towards our forktail friend, although... Are you a forktail? You are green, and I'm definitely gonna say Draconid, but... Are you? Are forktails just green here? Yep, you are most definitely a forktail. Could have been that you were something different, but that is fine. I'll just bury quickly make short work of you. No, I wanted to use Eden, but that's fine. It's fine. Yep. We'll have an Eden trap down, 
you do not stand that much of a chance. Come on. Right over here. Right over here. That's it. Good beast. Make sure that next time you and your friends don't stay near the road where you will most likely kill all kinds of innocent people. Anyway, fork the mutagen. I'll take that. And getting more and more dragon skills. I really want to know what kind of resources I need when I'm going to try and make some Grandmaster gear because assuming it's going to require the best of the best I want to know what I can sell for money and what I should absolutely keep. By the way, is there a path that's going directly towards the place? Because there were no boats so we're going to have to go for a swim. Then I guess we shall just go through the thicket right over here. That will be good enough. That will bring us the closest towards this aisle. And then we get to figure out what the deal is with this... Well, it's not a contract, but... It's something that for sure has me intrigued. Like, why a note like that in order to test your virtues and whatnot? This feels like it would be some kind of trap, to be honest. And I'm assuming that many people in the meantime for sure died. How many were lured here? How much treasure was left behind? Brown armor die, I'll take that. And I spotted you now. I can't ignore you anymore. I'll take all your stuff. Thank you. But no, with a notice like that, luring people to this island. What is going on here? Because this feels like a trap to lure people here, get rid of their stuff. This feels like a grave. Well, I honestly have got to say I'm surprised to find cucumbers. Well, I'll take them. Greetings. Who the hell are you? You? Okay, we've got a person just sitting in the middle of the lake. And meanwhile... Wisdom is a virtue which one should strive to cultivate throughout one's life. For it is impossible to be so wise, one cannot become even wiser. The wise know this. As we journey through life... We should seek to make wise choices. Remember, wise choices are not those which make our life easier or simpler. Often, they may make them more complicated, but always they make us better. Okay, I'm starting to retract my statement of this being some kind of ambush trap situation. This actually feels like a real deal. Honor cannot be purchased. Honor also cannot be sold. For its value is greater than all the treasure in the world. Yet one can lose it. And whoever does so shall have sullied his name for all eternity. A truly honorable man always stands behind his actions. Faces every challenge and refuses to lie. Alright. There are many traits which bear witness to a man's true nature. Compassion is what separates men from beasts. Whoever feels sympathy for his fellow man will never turn a blind eye to misfortune. He will instead always stand in defense of the wronged. Well, certainly good things to strive by. Valor does not make one good. Yet how many good men have you met in your life's journey who were cowards? Those who possess valor do not hesitate to stand against a majority, no matter what the consequences. And lastly... No man can be called good who does not share his prosperity with others. Generosity is required for dignity in life and peace in death. Ah. Now I can't remember from the knights that were killed. We know Milton was the sign of valor. I can't remember what the other three were. And thus I also do not exactly know which one is still missing. Who will be victim number five of the Beast of Beauclair? And what's the end game there? But maybe this person can teach us a little bit more. 
walking on water. About just like like who? Like a pond skater. Yeah. What are you thinking? <laughs> no matter. I suppose you thought nothing else in life could surprise you, eh? Wrong. Clearly. Okay. Um Greetings. My hope is that you can teach me more about the whole situation of Valor and all that kind of stuff. I can't grab that. Is this a Lady of the Lake situation? God, what, what was the sword called that she gave us? Where did that sword even go? And no did we lose that sword once we fought that dragon back with full test? Aaron died? Was that it? Either way, hi! Greetings. Why the walking on water bit? How? Hey, happen to know how the hell I can walk on that water? Naturally, I know. Since time immemorial have I dwelt in solitude on this shore, and I can testify to the extraordinary nature of the lake. What's so extraordinary about it? I mean, besides the fact that you can walk on its surface. A sword, most wondrous, lies in its depths. I watch over it. The blade may be grasped solely by one who possesses the five chivalric virtues. That is Erendite. Folk call me a lot of things, but virtuous? I don't know. Yet I do know, for I know who you are. You have proven yourself capable of great sympathy. You are a man of honor, as many can attest. Of humble means yourself. You show generosity to others. Your valor is the stuff of legends. Reason guides your actions, as it does those of all who are wise. You uh, have proven the five chivalric virtues dwell in your heart. Mean the sword's mine? I can dive in and take it? The sword deserves the hand of a master. You must prove your skills are worthy through combat atop the water's surface. Are you ready? Uh, combat with who? With you? I mean, f first and foremost, thank you for saying all of that. That's really nice, but... Sure. I guess I'm ready. Anytime. Then draw your blade. Oh. Well then. Can I use all my tricks? Oh. Oh god. Okay. 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 I may want to use all my tricks. Oh god, not this, not this. That is the kind of stuff I'm horrible with. Okay, we need Eden. We need Eden. We need to get the bloody hell away from this. I don't like this hermit. I don't like this hermit. At all. Especially if you start doing stuff like that. God, okay. This really is not helping me. At all. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. I'm not sure if I like this test. Oh, I'm blinded, I'm blinded. I'm... Didn't I have stuff for that? You know what? Potions all the way. This, this. this what? This is about to get me killed. Can I move, 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 move. Oh, oh. yeah, Eden, Eden. Get... Make sure, oh, why this whole blind situation? I don't like this man. I don't like this man. Okay. Really? Really? Not a fan. 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 Keep Quen up at all times. Otherwise, we are so dead. Okay. 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 This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Is this your favorite part? Is that what you said? It's not my favorite part. Because I'm the one who gets sand in his eyes. Come on. No, not that again. 
Okay, okay, okay. We're fine. We're fine. We're totally fine. We need Aiden. We need Aiden again. Okay, okay, okay. Get out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. He's right in my Aiden trap. That's why we like to have you. No, no, no. You shall not. You shall not. Oh my god. Was not expecting a fight with a mage. Worthy of wielding the blade. Beyond all doubt. Behold, your Arundite. We've met before. A long time Certainly. ago. The hermit admitted he knew you, remember? The Lady of the Lake. It is I. Forget not that you are a man right and honorable, devoted to doing good. And for these reasons you received the blade. Now bear it. Thank you for and this I honor. Trust this time you shall not lose it. Well, it was an accident when I lost it previously, but I'll try my best. Well, there can only be one. The almighty Erendite. Wonderful. wonderful. Just wonderful indeed. <laughs> well, I was not expected that I did not expect to ever meet with that blade yet again, but oh boy. Am I happy that we did? And now the question, how good is it? Can we wield it? We can wield it. That's powerful. Each blow generates charges which increase sword damage by 10%. Charges are lost over time or when receiving damage. A fully charged sword always deals critical hit damage. Killing a foe with a fully loaded sword will expend its charge to permanently increase the weapon's damage. Permanently? Okay, to a maximum of 10, mine... Minus something increasing along with your character's level. I will make sure that I will use that blade properly. It's gonna have to replace a silver sword right now. It, I might have to replace Erendite in the future, but. Oh. I like that idea. And of course, it is just really powerful compared to what we have right now, so. Oh, yeah. Well, then. Thus, Erendite, once more, is ours. I hate to admit it, but I had completely forgotten about Erendite. Thinking back to it, that first encounter with that dragon truly feels like a lifetime ago. But with a sword like this once more in our possession, monsters better beware. 